Ba Guajiang, one of the main branches of internal Chinese martial arts, is known for its use of evasive footwork, dragon-like body motions, and powerful palm strikes. Modern forms of Ba Gua can trace their roots back to Dung Hai Chuan. Although Dung is recognized as the founder, various branches of his art have evolved. One of the most well-known styles was taught by one of Dung's top students, Chen Tinghua. The material on this tape is representative of the Gao Sheng system of Ba Gua Zhang, which is also a branch of the Chen Tinghua style. The characteristic of the Gao system which sets it apart from other branches of the Chen Tinghua style is its division of the art into pre-heaven and post-heaven methods. Pre-heaven Bagua includes the familiar circle walking and palm change practice, which is the foundation of the art. Post-heaven Bagua consists of combat forms derived from the motions and energies of the pre-heaven circular changes. The pre-heaven set consists of the single palm change and eight additional palm changes. Each pre-heaven palm change on the circle corresponds with eight straight line post-heaven combat forms. Lota Show is now demonstrating the eight sections of Gao style pre-heaven Bagua. The Bagua Zhang movements are based on the principle of change as expressed in the eight trigrams of the I Jing. The movements are continuous like the flow of water, moving fluidly from one movement to the next, turning, spinning, and rotating without any break in the flow. This continuous, smooth, fluid movement is so prevalent in the Chen Tinghua school that this style of Bagua has been called Bagua Swimming Body Continuous Palm. In Gao style Bagua, there is an emphasis on the power of the body moving as a whole, connecting the lower and upper body as one, and the use of twisting movements. The power of the movements is internalized rather than shown on the outside. Although the movements are extremely powerful, the practitioner's smoothness and con continuity in motion hides this power. While practicing the swimming body continuous palm movements, we are guided by several principles. First, seeking stillness in movement. Second, finding balance within a state of imbalance. Third, harmonizing the mind and body so that there is awareness and coordination in all of the parts of the body for optimal efficiency of movement and focus of power. And finally, paying attention to the cultivation of qi for health. What will be demonstrated next are methods of controlling an opponent based on movements from the pre-heaven form. We will show how shifting position, intercepting, and imbalancing are used as some of the principles of Bagua Zhang fighting strategy. The first technique is called tripping. While parrying an attack, Lo will turn slightly and move to the outside while simultaneously stepping forward. Then Lo's lead hand follows an arc to strike the opponent's face. When the opponent blocks, Lowell grabs and pulls downwards while sweeping. Again, parry, strike, grab, sweep. Now the same technique shown on the other side. Take note of the angle. And once again, the same technique executed smoothly. Next, we have a variation of the tripping technique. If the opponent withdraws his leg, Loa brings his right foot forward to hook the opponent's left leg while his left hand strikes. The opponent receiving the two forces in opposite directions will be thrown. Here's the same technique again. Here is the same technique on the other side. The next technique is called levering onto the ground. Loa Perry's takes a back cross step, strikes at his opponent's face, and then wrenches the opponent's head. Note Loa's right hand changing position to control the opponent's lead arm, thus preventing a counter. Now shown on the other side. Now shown again slowly. A variation arises when the opponent blocks. Law grabs the arm, pulling it across while changing direction and clotheslining the opponent. Here the variation is demonstrated slowly.
Again, when the opponent blocks, Lowell grabs the arm, pulls, changes direction, and strikes. Here's the same variation on the other side. And again, demonstrated one more time. Lowell now executes the leg capture and trip technique. To diminish the power of the incoming blow, Lowell will deflect it downwards, as he shows here. This will disrupt the opponent's balance. With the same motion, Lowell strikes high for distraction. He hooks, pushes, and sweeps. Be sure to keep the pushing hand on the opponent's body control his balance if he tries to counter. This move can be done to the inside or the outside. Here we see it executed to the outside. Here's the same technique. Now Lowe shows how this technique can be executed on the inside. Notice that Lowe is always controlling the opponent's balance with the pushing hand. The same technique again. One more time on this side. Now shown from a different angle. And executed once more. Now Lowell demonstrates a takedown using joint pressure. Low attacks from the outside, grabbing the opponent's lead hand, striking towards his face, then following immediately with an arm lock. Because of the pain and pressure on the joint, the opponent follows the circular movement until he falls. Take note of the pivoting movement and the angle of takedown. If the opponent bends his elbow to resist the pressure, Lowell changes to another lock. When bending the arm back, keep his elbow tucked firmly in the area between the shoulder and chest for better control. Shown again. Now shown slowly. Now shown on another angle. Note how Lowell hooks inside the opponent's elbow when executing this technique. The next technique is an arm lever throw. Lowell connects, pierces to the face, grabs the blocking hand, uplifts the opponent's elbow, spins, strikes at the chest, and then pressures the arm again. The elbow strike to the chest is applied if the opponent resists the initial lock. To better control the person, it helps to continue turning away as you apply the arm lock. Shown slowly again. If the opponent tries to escape the pressure by moving, Lowell turns and strikes. Notice how he keeps hold with his right hand while the, his left hand drives across the opponent's face. Also notice that Lowell's body turns in a circle towards the ground as he strikes. The same technique shown again. Now from a different angle. And again, one more time.
Here you can see a shoulder throw. When actually applying this technique, Lowell jumps back while flinging the opponent forward. He demonstrates this now. Now this throw is demonstrated from a different angle. And the same technique once again. Law now demonstrates the principle of changing position. From a different angle. And now shown slowly. Lowe moves in an angle and intercepts the punch and counters with a back fist to the ribs. His opponent withdraws, deflects, and counters. Lowe intercepts, hooks his elbow, and slaps the back of his opponent's head. In this sequence, especially notice the body shifting, the intercepting and rapid change from defense to attack and attack to defense. Shown again slowly. And now shown on the other side. Law now demonstrates the turning body throw. Note the large circular body movement and the clamping of the arm in the execution of this technique. When practicing Bagua, we emphasize the embracing position, which gives us a strong structure which naturally reinforces principles of correct alignment. This is often referred to as Peng Jing, or ward off energy. The shoulders and hips, elbows and knees, and wrists and ankles should be coordinated and aligned and the spine straight. Notice the elbows are sunk and the hands are in front of the body at about mouth level. Let the arms hang and do not deliberately stick the shoulders forward. The head should gently extend upwards. Let the weight sink through the feet. Try to maintain a feeling of holding or embracing something and then turn to the side, keeping this fullness. The hands separate. One moves further from the body and higher and the other nearer to the body and lower. Continue to maintain the feeling of embracing. The front hand should be at about eye level. The fingers spread comfortably. The rear hand should be a hand's length below the front elbow. When turning, the movement should come from the waist, hips, and legs. Make sure that the head and shoulders are balanced. Avoid being stiff and keep the posture natural. Practice many times both left and right sides. Again, spine is straight. The shoulders are level. The lead hand at eye level and the fingers spread slightly. Law now positions Bill Tucker in the correct posture. When executing the single palm change, the practitioner should always adhere to the principles of the embracing posture. The lead hand is in front of the eyes, the fingers spread comfortably, the spine is straight, the shoulders, hips, elbows, knees, ankles, and wrists all coordinated, and the shoulders, shoulders are level. While practicing single palm change, the foot movement should be clear, the toe inward and toe outward steps should be distinct. The arm should maintain the ability to support pressure without collapsing. Shifting the weight and turning should all be led by the legs. After each time you change, check that your head and shoulders are balanced and relaxed and then slowly lower your focus to the bottom of your feet. The body should be balanced and able to support pressure from all sides. 
This is called central equilibrium. Bagua's concept of searching for balance in a state of imbalance is seen clearly in the posture of single palm change. The body, walking in a circle and twisting towards its center, is in a naturally unbalanced state. The challenge is to maintain stability and smoothness throughout the walking and changing of direction and keeping awareness in the whole body all the way through the change. Law now points out the coordinations and alignments. The body is balanced in all four directions so that there is a central stability even if someone is pushing gently from all sides, as Law is now doing to Bill Tucker. The upper body posture held in the Gao style Bagua is a natural and relaxed position. The elbows do not turn out to the sides as Luo now demonstrates. This is an incorrect position. Hold the, holding the elbows out causes unnecessary tension in the arms and shoulders and causes the body to be unbalanced. This is incorrect. In the correct posture, which Lowell now demonstrates, the elbows hang down and the arms have a slight feeling of embracing inward. The whole upper body is relaxed and held in a naturally strong position. Now we see the side view of this posture. Remember that the shoulders are level, the head upright, the lead hand at eye level, and the lower hand is under the upper elbow at, by about five or six inches. The hand should be bent back at the wrist with a feeling of simultaneous expansion and contraction, as if holding something in the palm of the hand. The focus is on the opening between the thumb and index finger and little finger. We now show a close-up of the hand form. The hand is relaxed with the fingers pointing upward. Now the lower hand form. The following are examples of the four most common methods of Bagua circle walking. The first is the mud step, which emphasizes a heavier step with the feet rubbing along the ground. The second is the chicken step, which emphasizes the lifting and placing of the feet, keeping them level and executing a smooth, natural motion. The third is the crane step, which emphasizes the lifting of the leg, extension of the stepping foot, and single-weightedness. The fourth step is the small, fast step, which emphasizes speed, lightness, and sometimes a lower posture facilitated by a deeper bend in the knees. In the Gao style Bagua, the chicken step is the most commonly practiced. The foot stays level as it moves along the ground and steps down flat. Upon touching the ground, the foot slides a little farther out. The feet don't rise above ankle height. The outer foot points the toes slightly inward while the inner foot steps straight. When the outer foot touches the ground, it then rotates slightly inward. The body moves out straight with the feet and then turns slightly inward when the feet turn. The, the walking should be stable and comfortable. Avoid an overly long step.
Law is now demonstrating the single palm change. Although the single palm change is not one of the eight pre-heaven palm changes in the Gao system, its movements form their foundation. The single palm change is an essential part of every Bagua system. Through it we practice changing directions, turning the body, coordinating the two sides and the upper and lower parts of the body. The single palm change can be executed both in the, to the inside, as Lo now demonstrates, or to the outside of the circle. Lo will now demonstrate the outside change. The Gao style Bagua practitioner will become familiar with several different single palm change variations before learning the eight section pre heaven form. If you are interested in learning more about the single palm change and its variations, please refer to Lo's first video, The Principles of Bagua Zhang Fighting. The snake form smooth body palm is the first gua in the eight pre-heaven sequences. Each of the pre-heaven sequences has a particular power it is developing. The snake form emphasizes expansion and contraction. The mind follows the body continuously through the sinuous snake-like motion. It has the health benefit of decreasing fire in the heart. Now Bill Tucker will demonstrate the snake form smooth body palm slowly while Lowell points out the proper alignments. When coming out of this squatting position, do not stand up fully. Notice the alignment from hand to foot. At the third piercing palm, the lead toe slants inward. The body and arm then turn inward before arcing out again, followed by swooping down of the body. The body movement is primary. It should lead the arms. Coming out of the second squatting position, you should pivot on the weighted foot as you turn to finish with the single palm change movement. Lo is now demonstrating a simpler version of this sequence, which is easier to perform and thus sometimes taught to beginners before the more difficult complete form movement is taught. The dragon form piercing hand palm is the second of the eight pre-heaven sequences. The motion and power developed in this sequence is spiraling up and down and stretching the left and right. This section especially works on extension of the spine and therefore is symbolized by the dragging shooting up to the sky and then descending into the sea. The health function from the Chinese medical perspective is regulating the three burners. Bill Tucker now demonstrates the dragon form piercing hand palm. Notice the alignment.
This is a simplified version, which isn't as much a strain on the body, but at the same time works the principles of movement. This is a good intermediate step, which prepares the body gradually for the longer version. The turn back the body and strike the tiger palm is the third of the pre-heaven sequences. The key points of movement are the rotating of the body in the turn around and the extension out to each side. When turning around there should be an upward movement and then come down as the arms separate first to one side and then the other. The turning of the body creates a swirling effect and the swaying of the body from side to side there is a curling movement executed for continuity. This sequence functions to regulate the liver and the lungs. Bill Tucker now demonstrates the form slowly as Law points out the important alignments. Law is now demonstrating a simpler version of the tiger movement. The fourth pre-heaven sequence is called the swallow overturning covering hand palm. This sequence trains the body in overturning. The strength used in all comes from the waist and hips with the whole body twisting to bring it around. The upper body should be flexible and the lower body stable. This movement helps train the body to be nimble. Its health function is to strengthen the kidneys and waist. The swallow gathers its body together as it goes upward and then spreads its wings to fly in a darting, weaving, and turning pattern. Likewise, we first gather the body together upwards and then extend out and down. Coming back, the waist and hips lead the slicing arm movement. Remember, when turning over, the head should insert under the arm and rotate around. The body should lead the hands rather than the hands leading the body. Bill Tucker now demonstrates the swallow form from a different angle. And once again, Bill Tucker will show the swallow form.
Here, Law will emphasize the correct posture coming out of the turn. Here he shows how the leg and hips drive the movement. And then the completion of the sequence. Law now shows a simplified version of the swallow form. The post-heaven movements that we are going to show now are from the second gua, dragon form piercing hand palm. Lo is now showing the relationship between the pre-heaven and post-heaven movements. This technique is called tre, which means to drop. Lo now shows the post-heaven form. Here are some examples of how this movement may be applied. Take a note of the arm rolling back to deflect and then striking with a back fist. This technique can be done to the inside or the outside. Here Lowell initiates the tack and then goes out to an angle. Here it is used to block a kick. From another angle, you can see clearly how Law is applying the technique. Take note of the angle here, and then the strike to the ribs. When blocking a kick, you sometimes need to step back to avoid the peak of the attack. Now these techniques are repeated again. Here Lo is demonstrating the relationship between the dragon form and the post-heaven sequence called flower hidden under leaf, or simply to hide. Here is the solo practice. Now some applications. Low strikes first high and then low. Also going from low to high. It can also be done to the inside or the outside. Here's a look from the other side. Law attacks the outside flank, striking high, and then grabbing just above the elbow to control his opponent's lead arm. Here Law moves out to a safe angle, and after striking the ribs, gives a back strike to the base of the neck. Now these techniques are shown again.
Here Law shows the opening out or separating strength that is developed in the dragon form and expressed in the application to chop. Here is the form sequence. The focus should be on the outer edge of the forearm and hand. Here the form sequence is shown again. Here is an application applied to the inside. Here it is applied to the outside. Here notice the way Law uses his elbow to control the opponent's elbow. Here the technique is shown on the other side. And here they are repeated again. and now shown from a different angle, the same techniques. Here Lowell demonstrates the technique to steal as it relates to the dragon form. Now Lowell demonstrates the post heaven form. The key point is the foot extending out coordinated with the hands pulling across the body. In the first application, the arm is pulled down and Law moves close in while tripping the opponent's foot. Here it is set up from the outside. If the opponent withdraws his foot, it can be followed up like this. Now the technique is shown again several times. The next technique, to pierce, comes from the third pre-heaven sequence, or the tiger form. Law now shows the post-heaven form.
Again, law shows the correspondence to the pre-heaven form and then follows that with the post-heaven form movements. Here, once again, is the post-heaven form. From a different angle, the same form. The application comes under the elbow to control the elbow or poke the ribs. The other hand comes over to poke the neck or eyes. Here the application is shown again. We can also use the edge of the arm to control the opponent's elbow, rolling his joint over and forcing him to the ground. This technique is shown again. The next sequence is called to move or to lever. It also comes from the tiger form. Here is the form sequence. The full name of this is Move from the Eyebrows. In the application, you can see that the eyebrows are the point of leverage. This technique can be used as an attack or a counter to a throw. Here it is used as an attack. Here it is used to counter a throw. Now that same counter is shown from a slightly different angle. This practice is for regulating the body, the mind, and the breathing. It aids the flow of chi and blood in the body. Moreover, it helps to cultivate chi and nourish the spirit. After training yourself in this method of regulating and adjusting the state of the body and mind, your overall health will be improved. The spirit of uprightness will be cultivated and the body's ability to regulate itself will be increased. This training has great benefits for the practice of Bagua and it serves as a good, safe foundation for standing and sitting meditations of all kinds. It also has therapeutic benefits for mental stress, anxiety, and hormonal imbalance, and can help in the relief of chronic illness. To start with, take a few deep breaths and then begin to adjust your body. This relaxation practice can be done sitting or standing, but for now we will assume that you are standing. As we look at the side view, notice the balanced, comfortable posture. The hands, with the palms facing each other, should have the feeling of holding a ball or a balloon. Let extraneous thoughts gradually dissolve with the stilling of the body. You can think of letting everything sink to the bottom of the feet. Let the breathing be normal and do not try to affect it. Just let the breath come and go. To help relax, try to keep a smile in three places. The point between the eyebrows, the mouth, and the center of the chest near the heart. 
Let these three parts be relaxed and comfortable. Maintain this relaxed posture and comfortable feeling for three or four minutes. This process of relaxing the body and stilling the mind is performed as preparation for standing meditation practice. Lo will now teach a relaxation meditation which involves visualization of various parts on the body relaxing in sequence. First assume the posture as explained in the last section. Next, starting with the point on the top of the head referred to as the Pai Hui, breathe in and as you let your breath out, relax downwards, visualizing a point on each side of your body sinking downward from the Bai Hui as the breath leaves the body. Continue to breathe naturally, and at each exhalation, think of relaxing the part of the body that you have reached with your mind. Think of every bit of soreness or discomfort leaving the body as the breath leaves. Continue down each arm until you have relaxed to the very tips of your fingers. Then put your focus on the point in the middle of the palm called the Lao Gong and let the feeling of relaxation radiate through you. Avoid leaning backwards. The shoulders and hips should remain aligned. After doing this sequence three times, shift your focus to the navel. Continuing to relax, let the weight fall through the bottom of the feet while breathing naturally. Again, three times from the top of the head, down the sides to the tips of the fingers. Now go through the same process starting at the top of the head and relaxing downwards with each exhale, this time going down the front of the body as Law is now demonstrating. When you reach the navel, the visualization separates into each leg, the focus traveling down the front of each leg, continuing downwards with each exhale until you reach the big toe. Again, do this three times and then bring the focus back to the navel, letting the breath come and go on its own. Finally, perform the relaxation exercise along the back of the body, breathing in and then relaxing down as you breathe out. Again, start from the Pai Hui and then relax, visualizing a line down the back of your body as Lo is now demonstrating. When it reaches the lower spine, it divides down the backs of the legs all the way down to the bubbling well point in the middle of the sole of the foot. After doing this three times, return your focus to the navel and enjoy the sense of relaxation and bodily and mental comfort. Now with the focus on the navel and the Lao Gung point in each palm, you might have a feeling of light expansion or fullness, especially in the lower abdomen and between the hands.
The Lao Gong point is very important, along with the points that align it from the tip of the middle finger to the base of the palm, because they correspond with the points of the Bai Hui at the top of the head, which is related to the tip of the middle finger, to the perineum at the base of the torso, which corresponds to a point at the base of the palm. All the points in between have similar relation, as Luo now demonstrates. Likewise, the back of the hand has points that correspond in a similar fashion to points along the spine all the way down to the coccyx, as Luo is now showing. Again, Law will point out the relationships between points on the middle finger and points along the back of the spine. After completing the whole process of relaxing, bring the hand slowly to the lower abdomen to gently massage this area. This helps to gradually let the focus shift away from the navel. This is an excellent way to finish your practice so that strain and soreness that may be accrued during practice are lessened. An abbreviated version of this is a good way to prepare your mind and body before training so that you can bring more concentration to what you are doing. It is akin to resetting a machine clearing out the previous program to be more relaxed and lucid it is well worth the time and energy spent. In this video, Lord de Show has demonstrated the eight circular changes of Gao style Bagua, methods of off-balancing and throwing an opponent based on those circular changes, taught the first four of the pre-heaven sequences in detail, shown how some of the post-heaven sets relate to these pre-heaven sequences in both form and application, and taught a method used to relax the mind and body, which can be used before and after practice. Hopefully this video will serve as a primer to individuals who are new to Bhagwazang and help experienced practitioners gain some new insights into the Gao style of Bhagwa. We will conclude this video with Lo De Show once again demonstrating all eight of the circular changes in Gal.
Thank you.